All right, so collecting the data at West Edmonton Mall, okay, there's a few things that we have to be aware of while we're doing that, okay? There is obviously a map in the data booklet here, right, that can help you find everything. It's not like the park's that big, a one walk around and you'll see it all, okay? Um, so tips on gathering data, the times that are required to work out the problems are pretty easily measured with the stopwatch on your phone, okay? That's gonna measure to the nearest hundredth of a second, which is way more accurate than we'll need, but that's what we'll take, okay? Um, so just make sure that you do that, okay? Uh, when you're measuring a ride that has circular motion, we suggest you repeat it each, uh, repeat each time measurement several times and then take an average. Okay, because you're not always going to guess exactly, especially on the swing of the century. Okay, you want to have uh, at least the person who's in your group that you're using as your guinea pig tomorrow should wear something brightly colored. All right, that way when they're circling around at high speed, it's easy to catch them. Okay, and you know, uh, who, you know where they are, uh, but you still, when it's whirling around in a circle, take a few measurements just so that you get Okay, um, some, you, know, you can use an average, which will be a little bit more accurate. Okay, obviously we can't interfere with the normal operations of the rides, so we can't directly measure the heights, but what we will do, okay, is we'll do a little bit of trigonometry. Not this, what's on the formula sheet here, but basically we will pace off from as close to the ride as we can get to a little ways away, and then we'll sight along with our phone using the clinometer. I showed you guys that, right? It's actually called the level now, okay? The, the app is called the level, right? So you use that, have your partner read the angle off of the um, off of the phone. Make sure that it's reading the angle from horizontal, okay? Um, and not from vertical, because if you get past 45, it starts to read it the other way, okay? So just make sure you're watching that uh, when you do the angle. If the angle doesn't make sense, it's probably measured from the other. Okay, uh, so you'll do that and then you'll use trigonometry to calculate the height. Uh, you don't necessarily have to do that while you're in the park, but your phone does have a scientific calculator. You can have it do the sine calculations, tan calculations, whatever. Okay, uh, so what we'll have is we'll have the adjacent side, okay, and we'll have the angle and we'll be looking for the height. Okay, so we will be using tangent because that's what we have. All right, so you won't have to do two triangles, just one. Okay, pace it off and so on. I'll kind of talk about where are the good places to do that for each ride today. All right, that's kind of some things you'll want to make a note of as we go along. All right, um, okay, first activity is the physiological reactions to amusement park rides. This is why I've said several times you need one person who's going to be your guinea pig who is not afraid to ride any of the rides, okay? They have to be, this just for the purpose of having a controlled experiment, okay? Um, so things you're going to be measuring, pulse rate before and after, okay? Um, and that needs to be done like immediately before and immediately after. Like for something like the mind bender, while you're waiting for the restraints to be released, you should be taking your pulse, all right? So you can have somebody right there, okay, who's, you know, watching on their watch or whatever, and you're timing for 10 to 15 seconds and counting, okay? And then multiply that number by either six or four, if, depending on whether you multi you counted for 10 or 15 seconds. Don't, just don't, don't bother doing it for a whole minute. I've had people do that. Well, by the time a minute is up, your heart rate's gone down. The second half of your count is not at all like the first half, okay? We want it immediate, those 15 seconds immediately after the ride, right? Because otherwise, I get people who are like total heroes, right? When they got zero reaction to the ride and that's crap okay nobody rides the mind bender with no change in pulse unless they were dead to start with okay um so just keep that in mind uh physiological symptoms there's a list here of numbers keep in mind that when you do the assignment it's not going to want the numbers it's going to want you to write out in words okay the symptoms you experience but for the for the sake of expediency when we're on the trip you can just write in the numbers sweaty palms fast breathing whatever okay peed my pants that one's not on there but okay uh, you know yeah you can write other for that one yeah. um all right so just write those in okay after each one okay and then there's these two questions here those you should talk about with your group okay Look at the design of the rides. What makes this ride look scarier or feel scarier, feel faster, okay, whatever. Talk about those things. Just make some jot notes in there. Those questions will be repeated on the assignment. You'll be taking your kind of jot note answer and expanding on it, but you need to have enough there, okay, to remind yourself of those things. It's also a good idea to take some video. Okay, while we're at the park, use your phone, take some video of the people on the rides, okay, of the rides themselves, things like that to, to you know, kind of jog your memory again, you know, in a week when you're working on this. Um, well, anyone can do the measuring. One person actually has to ride, okay? So that's why we took everybody's 
paces. Like if you get pressed for time, you go have somebody pace off the mind bender, somebody goes and paces off the, the space shot, right? Then you can use their numbers, yeah? Okay, so that's, the, that's activity one. Everybody has to do that and you have to do all of the rides, okay? You can't have any of these blank. They all have to be done. You will not be allowed to go out into the mall until I see this chart and, these, and some stuff down here for these questions. Okay, activity two is the auto sled. This is the one people screw up all the time because they don't listen. So make sure you're listening carefully because I don't want you to screw it up, okay? And in fact, Mr. Dickey got so angry one semester that so many people screwed it up that he changed it to color and he put it in red, okay? Uh, so what we're looking at here is that small little red carded roller coaster okay it's got the yellow uh track okay it's not like really fast or really scary or anything but um it's it's just a kind of basic um roller coaster okay so the things you need to record for that for the auto sled are the number of cars on the train so before you get on count how many cars there are okay number of people on the train on the time that you're doing the measurements okay uh the length of the train that's something you'll just pace off so before you get on just Pace the train, okay, count the number of steps for the length of the train. Everyone follow on that. Okay. Um, now, four and five are the ones everyone screws up. Okay. Time for the train to pass the top of the first hill. So the train starts down here. It gets towed to the top of the first hill, and then it goes down after that. It doesn't look exactly like that, but you get the idea. Okay. This is what you are timing. When the front of the train gets to the top of the hill, you start the timer. When the back of the train passes this same point, you stop the timer. This will allow you to calculate how fast the train is going at the top of the hill using V equals D over T. The length of the train will be the distance traveled. Okay, that's how we're going to measure it. So when the front of the train passes this point, start timing. When the back of the train passes this point, stop timing. That's what you need. Here's what people do instead. They start the timer here and they time until the train gets to the top of the hill. Not the same thing. Gives you terrible, terrible data. Okay, everybody follow on that. All right, the, that's for number four. For number five, you're doing the same thing for the bottom of the first hill. Okay, so it's going to go down. You're going to start the timer when the front of the train gets to the bottom. You're going to stop the timer when the back of the train gets to that same spot. It'll be a much shorter time. Okay, everybody follow. Make sure you do that one right, because inevitably I have people time the whole thing, and then they find out that there's less, like the, the amount of, the, the train is going slower here. And they, they accept that answer and they write it on their assignment and I give them zero, okay? So don't do that, okay? It's obviously going to be faster here. Front of the train, start it. Back of the train, stop it, okay? Everybody got it? All right, uh, so that's what we're doing for four and five, okay? There's a special note up here and that's in color, so make sure you read it tomorrow in case you forget, okay? Um, and then number six, the height of the first, uh, top of the first hill using the bottom of the first hill is ground level. So for that, okay, the best place to measure that is actually right where the big climbing apparatus is. Okay, so there's the thing where you can put the climbing harnesses on. The, the auto sled goes right over the walkway at that point, and that's its highest point. So you can stand right underneath the track and walk away counting your steps, and then turn around and get the angle for the highest point. It's right there on that walking path. It's really easy to get that measurement. I would do more than that. The more steps you take, the better, because the angle will be lower. Right? Um, and with the amount of error in our measurement here, the more we go, the better. Okay. Um, so just keep that in mind. That's where, that's where and how you'll want to get this number here. Okay. Everybody good with that? Um, so how many times you're probably going to have to watch the auto sled? At least two, okay? At least two. I would say four, right? Just to get two for each one and then kind of have a look. Are they consistent? If they're not, then maybe you need to watch it a third time, okay? Um, but that's, that's how you need to do that. Here's the thing about the park tomorrow. They will be running on an alternating schedule tomorrow, which means one person, one operator runs two rides, so they'll run the auto sled and then they'll go run the 
Galaxy Twister or something like that. I don't remember who goes with who, but okay, they'll run one one ride for like one maintenance cycle, and then they'll leave that ride and they'll go and run another one. Okay, and so that one will not be running. So you need to keep an eye on when rides are running and get your measurements while they're running. There's nothing worse than it's near the end of the day and I'm like, oh no, I haven't got the measurements for the mind bender, and that guy's running the space shot right now, and I don't know when he'll be back. Okay, so make sure that when something is running, you get your measurements for it. All right, uh, your qualitative observations are pretty simple. Where was the highest hill on the ride? Okay, um, and you don't really need to put much explanation in the data booklet. You'll want more explanation in the assignment booklet. Okay, this stuff is all going to be repeated in the assignment booklet, so you'll copy it over. Okay, um, did you feel lateral forces on the ride? Were you thrown from side to side in the train car? If so, where did that happen? Just make some notes about that. Okay, where on the ride did you feel you were going the fastest? Just Tell me where detail can come in later, right? Um, where on the ride did you feel you were lifted off your seat? So were there any spots where you felt an apparent weight that was less than normal, okay? Um, and how did the ride cause that feeling? So a couple of jot notes about that, right? That's the auto sled data. Okay, the flying galleon is the swinging ship, okay? It goes back and forth, back and forth. Okay, uh, the, you don't need to, there's not a lot of observations for this one. You need the time for one complete swing. That has to be when it is in full swing. Do not do that when it's first starting out. Okay, wait till it's in full swing. One swing, remember, is from this side all the way over and back again. It's a pendulum. Okay, that's one complete cycle. I would do a few of those. Okay, and just make sure that they're consistent. Angela. Yes, just watch it and you'll see it going always to the same height. You'll you'll know when it gets there. It's pretty obvious. Yeah. Okay. And then your estimated deflection. Okay. Uh, so for that one, all right, you're gonna take your phone and you're just gonna angle it, okay, until it's even. What you'll want to use is the crow's nest, okay, the pole here, right? That's right in the middle, right? When it's in its full swing, okay, try and get your phone parallel to that while it's swinging at for its highest point. That'll give you its angle of deflection. Yes. Yeah, because it'll be the same on the other. Yeah. All right. Um, and then for our qualitative observations in each arc, where did you feel the most pressure against your seat? So your guinea pig will have to tell you that. Okay. Uh, and where did you feel you were going the fastest? Again, guinea pig will have to tell you that. All right. Questions on those? So that's probably the easiest one in terms of data gathering is the pendulum. Okay. Russ, question? No, 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 no. Your me the measurements do not happen on the ride. You watch the ride to take the measurements. You cannot. You can't have your phone out on the ride. Okay. If you have your phone out while you're on the ride, they give you they'll they'll give you trouble, or you'll lose your phone. You'll drop it. Okay. Because I've seen people who have like tried to do that. Okay, on the rides, and inevitably, they, not only do they get in big trouble because the phone could fall into the mechanism of the ride, especially the space shot, um, but if they drop their phone, it's destroyed. Okay, so uh, they don't let you go in and fetch it, and they won't go fetch it for you. All right. So yeah, don't do any measuring while riding. Just enjoy. Okay, the measurements all happen when you're not on the ride. Okay. All right. The space shot. This one you have to be careful with your measurements. People screw up the measurements for this one all the time because they get lazy. Okay. You can see. Well, actually, you can't see it in this picture, but they've got measurements written on the walls here. But they're in feet. And they're not very accurate because they're measured from the ground, not from where the ride actually starts. Okay, the ride actually starts level with the observation platform, which is convenient because that's where we need to measure, and that's where we can stand and do our measuring from. So it's pretty pretty good that way. Okay, so um, when you're uh, measuring the height of the space shot, you're going to stand as close to this apparatus as possible. Okay, you won't be able to stand like right beside it, but stand kind of, so you're looking at it over here and then walk away from it in a straight line, turn around and measure your angle to the highest point on the right. So you will have had to watch it one time to know how high the cart goes. Okay. Um, so you'll get your distance covered by the car during the first upward acceleration. And then for the downward, these are not the same number. Okay. It launches from lower than it comes back to. Okay. So the first upward launch will be further. Okay, when it comes back down after that first that first launch, it does not come back down to level with you. So you'll need to measure where it comes down to to get your um, 
change in height for the second part. You also need the time taken for the first upward acceleration and the time taken for the first downward acceleration. This one you have to watch more than any other ride. Okay? You will probably watch this run through its paces six or seven times before you get all of the data you need. Okay, Because um, you won't be able to get this time and this time on the same run. Okay, you just you be too you're not quick enough on the on the measurements. Okay, on the timing. All right, so you only need those four things. Okay, uh, and then you got your qualitative observations. This is about forces. Okay, so in terms of the forces acting on your body, describe your sensations. So when you are ascending the ride, list your forces, but also describe how you felt. Okay, you can talk about what forces were acting on you, but talk about how you felt. Were you heavy? Were you light? Were you weightless? Talk about that. Okay, when you're suspended at the top, because when it shoots you up the first time, it stops you at the top. Okay, and you're suspended for about a second before it shoots you back down. All right, um, so just be aware of that. Um, during free fall, so that would be the, the second part, and then anytime you're stopping, how did you feel? Okay, this is mostly stopping on the way down is what we're looking for. Okay, so those are your qualitative observations. Again, your guinea pig will have to tell you those. All right, the mind bender. All of the questions on the mind bender have to do with this loop, the central loop. The reason we use the central loop is it's, it's the only one you can get good measurements for because the catwalk goes right through it. Okay, the other two are off to the side and you can't get as good a measurements on those. So for this center loop, you'll want to start, okay, you can see Mr. Dickey right here, okay, in the red shirt, all right? So what you'll want to do is stand inside the loop and walk up the stairs along this catwalk, counting your steps as you go. I know it's a little bit tough on the stairs, but there's not much we can do about that. It's the best way to get the measurement, okay? The nice thing about being on these stairs is at eye level, where you'll be holding your phone to do the measurement, you will be exactly in the center of the loop. And so when you get that height measurement, it'll be the radius of the loop, okay? Everyone follow me there? That's why we don't wanna do it from down here behind where Mr. Dickey is standing, because then you'll be well below the center of the loop and you'll have, you won't get the radius. We only want the radius of the loop, that's measured from up here, okay? All right, so need the radius of the center loop, okay? The time for one revolution around the center loop. Uh, best way to do this one, put your phone on slow-mo, okay, and record. Like, put it on the highest frame rate you can. Okay, you can change that in settings, okay, when the, and, and film the, the thing going through. That way you can do, use this, the times on the video because your reaction time is not good enough to do this, okay? It's just not. You go through this loop like that, okay? So the best thing to do is to video it at the highest frame rate your phone will do, and then just watch when it comes in, what's the time mark as it goes around, what's the time mark when it leaves. That's the best way to get that time. Do it a few times. Uh, I, around there, yes. Yeah. Okay, so that's how you want to time that center loop, okay? And then these are just predictions, right? Your guinea pig can give you an idea. Right? How, how much heavier than normal did you feel? Okay? The first time you ride the mind bender, your chin will be pinned to your chest. Okay? You just will not be ready for it. Okay? The G-forces are significant. All right? So when you go around, you'll, and you'll be screaming and laughing and having all kinds of fun. Okay? The second time, you'll be more ready for it. But, okay? uh, then your qualitative observations. What sensations did you feel as the train was passing through the loops? Any of the loops will do okay? uh, for the qualitative stuff. Where's the highest point on the ride? Okay. Uh, where on the ride were you traveling the fastest and where on the ride did you experience the greatest forces? In other words, where did you feel like heavy and thrown and pinned and whatever else? Okay, so that's what we're looking for there. All right, swing of the century. Okay, another one that timing by video is probably a good idea, okay, because reaction time is not always as good. Um, so you want the radius of the orbit. That has to be done inside. So you have to go in the ride right? Stand around right here and walk out. But you'll have to have watched the ride once first because we need to know, we need the radius to how far out the swings go when it's actually swinging, all right? So you'll have had to watch it once and kind of get a mark on where they are and pace off to that point. That'll be the radius of the rotation, okay? David? Like here as opposed to the rest. Uh, whichever one your guinea pig is going to be on. Yeah, okay. Um, and then the time for one revolution, again, probably the best way to get that is to video it 
okay, at a high frame rate, and then just look at the timestamps and see, okay. Your qualitative observations, okay, and guys, this you need to look at really, really carefully because people have, they make an assumption on this question all the time, and it's wrong, okay. You need to actually look at this really, really carefully and use your common sense, okay. How does the angle of an empty seat compare with the angle of an occupied seat? Look at it carefully. Think about the ride safety factor, okay, when you're thinking about those angles, all right? Um, does the mass of the rider make any difference? So, okay, look at a few people who are different masses and see what happens, okay? Describe your sensations as the ride increases in speed, okay? And watch the ride from the beginning until it reaches full speed. What happens to the angle of the chain attached to the seats as the ride increases in speed? That one's pretty common sense, but, okay. All right, the bumper cars. This one you definitely have to do with video, okay? Because um, there's certain collisions that you need to make happen, all right? So the first time, just go out there and kill each other, okay? Ride it, bump into each other, give each other whiplash, have fun, okay? Then you need to make certain collisions happen and you need to video them so you can review them over and over again because it's pretty nitpicky here, some of the details, all right? So, um, what happens in a collision when one bumper car is not moving? So one person has to sit there and get hit. And you need to hit them as hard as you can, okay? So yeah, get ready, okay? If you normally wear a mouth guard for sports, bring it, okay? Or you might bite your tongue, all right? So do that. Oh yeah, we've had people bite their lips and tongues on this one. It happens all the time, okay? Then, okay? You need um, a rear end collision with both cars moving. So the front car moving slowly and then a car coming up from the back and hitting them from behind faster. Okay, so both cars moving, video that. Okay, a head on collision with both bumper cars moving. Okay, so line it up and make it happen. Okay, a collision with a stationary object like a wall. Okay, so you just floor it and hit the wall. Okay, video that. Because there's going to be a comparison between these two collisions, a very important comparison between these two collisions, okay? And then two cars sideswiping, so just kind of come up to each other and hit on the side. Well, video them and then talk about what happens to each car when you're writing your description. What happens? We're really looking in the assignment for the movement of people's heads in the head-on collisions and rear-end coll rear collisions. Okay, how much does their head move? What direction does it move? Okay, that's what we're looking for. So that's why you really want to get a good shot of it on video so you can slow it down and really see it happen. Okay? I feel like the person running the ride is going to be like so confused because they just see the flooring right in the middle. <laughs> no, no, they know because they've seen us do it all before. Yeah. And then usually what Mr. Dickey and I will do is while you guys are trying to get data, we get in there and mess you up. Yeah. 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 It's like, oh, all right, they're just about to do it. Get them. And then, yeah. then it takes longer. Okay. That's the data that you need to get tomorrow. So put somebody reliable in charge of this booklet. Okay. Because if you don't have this tomorrow, you're pretty much cooked. Okay. So make sure that you have this tomorrow. Period three, partner? Okay. Uh, who is it? Oh, Jackson. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, there'll be, I think probably most of my classes will be on one bus and Mr. Dickey's will likely be on the other, but there might be some changeover. Okay. Now, guys.